refraction of light when a light ray passing from one medium to another medium it bends this phenomenon is called as refraction why the light ray is bending when a light ray travels from one medium to another medium the speed of light changes so it bends let us take few examples to understand this here the pencil looks like bending because the speed of light is in air and water is different that's why it bends this phenomenon of bending of light at the interface of two media is commonly known as the refraction of light the bending of light ray depends depends on the refractive index of two media let us take another example to understand the refraction here in this glass you can observe an arrow mark carefully observe the direction of arrow mark see the direction of arrow mark is reversing because of refraction of light behavior of light ray during refraction when a light ray traveling from one medium to another it doesn't travel in the same direction it bends this is called refraction and the bent ray is called a refracted ray and the perpendicular line striking on that point is called as normal light can bend towards or away from the normal line let us see examples when light travels from rarer medium to denser it bends towards the normal line when it travels from denser medium to rarer it bends away from the normal here the light traveling from air to water so it bends towards the normal when a light ray travels from glass to water that is denser to rarer it bends away from the normal line hi everyone this is irfan so now we are going to discuss about refraction of light what is refraction when we observe this phenomenon so let us try to understand about this quality of light see the light travels from one medium to another medium what is the speed of light in vacuum so the speed of light in vacuum is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second that means around 3 lakhs kilometers per second with this much of speed the light travels in vacuum when it travels from one medium to another medium what happens when the medium changes the speed of light changes that's why the light bends that means it changes its direction this quality of light is called as refraction let us try to understand this quality with some examples so here i have a pen now i am going to put this pen into this glass of water what happens observe carefully you can observe the difference in the pen which is inside the water and which is outside the water see the part of pen which is inside the water it is looking bigger than its original size and also at the interface that means where water and air meets at the interface the pen the pen looks like it has bent is the pen originally bent see the pen is not bent it is straight in direction when i put this pen into the water 
it looks like it has bent. This quality of light is called as refraction. Why this is happening? Because the speed of light is changing. Here we have air and here we have water. That means two different mediums. When the light is traveling from air to water, that means two different mediums. So, it looks like the light ray bends. This quality is called as refraction. Let us take one more example. Here, I have a lemon. Observe the size of the lemon now. What happens when this lemon is placed inside the water? So, into this glass of water, now I am going to put this lemon. Observe the size of the lemon now. So, it is looking bigger than its original size. Why is this happening? This is also because of refraction. Now, in this class, we are going to discuss why this is happening. Why some objects are looking bigger than their original size. Why the light ray bends. So, these are the topics now we are going to discuss in this class. See, just before we have discussed that, when light travels from one medium to another medium, it changes its direction. That means it bends because the speed of light changes. How the speed of light changes? How to find this quality? Now let us discuss. First of all, let us take this case. That means when light ray is traveling from air to glass. So two different mediums we have. So in this case, the light ray is traveling from air and it is entering into the glass. What happens? Before going to that, let us try to know few basic concepts of this topic. So this light ray which is traveling, this light ray is called as incident ray. So the light ray which is passing into the another medium is called as incident ray and the light ray which is traveled into the another medium this light, this light ray is called as a refracted ray. Now if we observe carefully the angle between the incident ray and this line, this line N, N dash this line, this perpendicular line is called as normal line. So, the angle between the incident ray and the normal line is called as angle of incidence. It is denoted by small i. And here, the angle between refracted ray and the normal line is called as angle of refraction. It is denoted by small r. How these two values are? Now we are going to discuss. Let us take the first case. That means when light ray is traveling from air to glass. So in this case, the light ray is traveling from air to glass. So this air is called as a rarer medium. And this glass is called as a denser medium. That means when a light ray is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium, what happens? How the light ray bends. So if you observe this diagram carefully, when the light ray is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium, the angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction. That means the refracted ray, the refracted ray bends towards the normal line. When a light ray passing from rarer medium to denser medium, it bends towards the normal line. That's why the angle of refraction decreases than the angle of incidence. So in this case, the angle of incidence is always greater than angle of refraction. Let us take another case. That means, when light ray traveling from denser medium to rarer medium. That means, 
when a light ray is passing from glass to A. In this case, how it changes? Let us try to discuss. So, this is the incident ray. This is the incident ray, that means the light ray is passing from glass to the air. That means from denser medium to the rarer medium. So, this is angle of incidence and this is angle of refraction. The angle between normal line and incident ray is called as angle of incidence and the angle between normal line and refracted ray is called as angle of refraction. So, here in this case, how these two are, if you observe this diagram carefully, you can easily find out that the angle of incidence is less than angle of refraction. That means when a light ray passing from denser medium to the rarer medium, it bends away from the normal line. It bends away from the normal line. That's why the angle of refraction is always greater than the angle of incidence in this case. So, so angle I is less than angle R. So, this is the relation between angle of incidence and angle of refraction in this case. And now, how to find the speed of light and how to compare the speeds of light or how to compare the materials to understand this, we need to find out, we need to understand another concept that is refractive index. So, what is refractive index and uh, how it is useful for us? So, the refractive index, it is denoted by small l. What is refractive index? So, the refractive index is the, this is also called as absolute refractive. The absolute refractive index is defined as the ratio between the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in a medium. So, speed of light in vacuum is denoted by C, speed of light in a medium is denoted by V. Then, we can write the formula for the refractive index that is absolute refractive index and is equals to C by V. So, this is the formula find the refractive index of a medium. So, speed of light in vacuum, its units are meters per second. Speed of light in a medium, its units also meters per second. So, these two will get cancelled. So, that's why we can get 1. That means, the refractive index has no units. There are no units for refractive index. It is a constant value. Now, how this refractive index helps us to understand the nature of a material. So, as the refractive index of a material increases, the speed of light decreases. That means, the material which has very less refractive index, the speed of light is very high in that material. If the material has very high refractive index, the speed of light is very less in it. For example, if you take air, the refractive index of air is 1.0003. That means almost equal to 1. That's why the speed of light in air is almost equal to the speed of light in vacuum. Approximately equals to 3 to 10 to the power of 8. If you want to say exactly, the speed of light in air is 2.97 into 10 to the power of 8. That means almost equals to 3 to 10 to the power of 8. If we take diamond, the refractive index of the diamond is 2.42. So the refractive index of a diamond is 2.42. That means it is 2.42 times to the refractive index of air. That's why the speed of light in diamond is very less. The light travels very slowly in a diamond. That means the speed of light depends on the value of refractive index. So by knowing the refractive index value, we can easily find out the speed of light. That means how it travels in that medium. So these are the concepts 
basically we need to understand in the case of refraction relate to refract to index when light travels from one medium to another medium the speed of light changes so it changes its direction that means it bends let speed of light in medium 1 is v1 speed of light in medium 2 is v2 the ratio of speed of light in medium 1 and speed of light in medium 2 that is v1 by v2 is a constant so the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 that is n21 is equals to v1 by v2 same like that refractive index of medium 1 with respect to medium 2 that is n12 is equals to v2 by v1 if we take the product of n12 and n21 that is v2 by v1 into v1 by v2 it, it is equals to 1 By this, we can conclude that n12 is equals to 1 by n21. Snell's law. The angle of incidence and the angle of refraction satisfy the equation sin i by sin r is equals to n. Place a semicircular glass disc as its diameter coincides with interface. Point a laser light as the light propagates from air to glass through the interface at point O. Let the angle of incidence is 5 degrees. We got angle of refraction as 3 degrees. If angle I is equal to 10 degrees, we got angle R as 7 degrees. If angle I is equal to 50, 15 degrees, we got angle R is equal to 10 degrees. If it is increased to 20 degrees, we get angle R as 14 degrees if the angle of incidence is 25 degrees we will get the angle of refraction as 17 degrees we can continue the experiment like this with the different angles of incidence values let us tabulate the angle i and angle r values and try to find out the ratio between sine i and sine r In this table, we have tabulated the different angle of incidence values and the correspondence angle of refraction values. So here, we also calculated the sine values of all angle of incidence values and also the sine values of all angle of refraction values. In the last column, we have calculated the ratio between sine i and sine r if you observe all these values these all values are almost equals to 1.4 this constant value denotes the refractive index of the material of glass disc so if, if we get the average of all these values that means the average of all sine i by sine r values we get 1.45 so this value denotes the refractive index hi friends in this class we are going to discuss about total internal reflection we know that when a light ray is passing from denser medium to the rarer medium it bends away from the normal line. Hence, the angle of refraction is greater than angle of incidence. Gradually, if the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction also increases. At 
a particular angle of incidence the refracted ray just grazes if we observe the third diagram the angle of as the angle of incidence increases the angle of refraction grazes with the interface that means for some angle of incidence the angle of refraction has become 90 degrees this angle of incidence is called as critical angle that means at critical angle the angle of refraction is 90 degrees if the angle of incidence is further increased observe the green lined green green colored line here here the angle of incidence is greater than the angle the critical angle for this angle of incidence the light ray doesn't go doesn't undergo refraction here we observe reflection that means if the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle the light ray undergoes reflection rather than refraction this is known as total internal reflection there are some conditions for the total internal reflection the first one the light ray should travel from the denser medium to the rarer medium the second one the angle of incidence in denser medium should be greater than the critical angle let us try to understand this with an example to observe total internal reflection clearly we need a laser light and an aquarium here if we want to observe this phenomenon clearly better to add few drops of detol into the water so observe here carefully here we are sending a light ray from one side of the aquarium here we can observe clearly that the light ray is reflecting into water itself but it is not refracting into the air observe carefully here the water is reflecting into the same medium that is denser medium this is an example for total internal reflection now in this class we are going to discuss about one of the important topics that is applications of total internal reflection so here are the few few examples for the total internal reflection that we observe in our daily life the first one is formation of mirage and brilliance of diamond and optical fibers let us discuss one by one first we discuss about the formation of mirages so here is the image which shows the formation of a mirage mirage is an optical phenomenon that create illusion of water these are most commonly observed on sunny days when driving down a roadway on sunny days surrounding air is heated to high temperatures hot air tends to be less dense than cooler air when light travels through a non uniform medium that means hot air cool air that means different uh, medium it flow it follow a curved path to reach observer's eye so you can observe this in the diagram so a curved path of light ray traveling to the observer's eye now 
ऑब्जर्वर रिसीव्स टू रेस फ्रॉम द ऑब्जेक्ट वन इज डायरेक्ट एंड अदर इज कर्वड यू कैन ऑब्जर्व दीज टू रेस इन द डायग्राम वन वन लाइट रे विच इज शोइंग डायरेक्टली दैट मीन्स स्ट्रेट स्ट्रेट लाइन एंड अनदर वन इज कर्वड लाइन सो दैट्स वाई द इल्यूशन ऑफ वॉटर टेक्स प्लेस So next we discuss about the brilliance of diamond. See here you can observe the how the total internal reflection takes place in a diamond. The refractive index of a diamond is two point four two. when light travels from a to diamond its speed decreases 2.42 times the critical angle of diamond is very less that is 24.4 degrees only so by polishing the diamond with specific cuts it is adjusted that the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle we know that when the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle there the total internal reflection takes place so hence it suffers multiple reflections and gives the diamond a sparkling brilliance that's why a diamond shines when a light ray is dispersed on it and now we discuss about the another another example for total internal reflection that is optical fiber one of the most important application of total internal reflection is optical fiber so an optical fiber is given in the picture observe it carefully so how the optical fiber works let us learn when light enters the core of glass fiber from one end in such a way that the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle it suffers total internal reflection and emerges from other end you can observe this in the picture see the optical fiber contains few parts that is core so you can observe the light ray is entering from one end of the fiber optics so when it enters into it that means the angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle of that glass material that's why it takes reflection and travels you can observe this phenomenon in this diagram clearly so where we use this optical fibers in our daily life so these optical fibers are used in optical communications and also we use this in endoscopy so endoscopy is one of the test we uh, we take in the medical medical field hi everyone now in this class we are going to discuss about another new concept of refraction of light now here you can observe a glass lab in my hand i have a glass lab i don't know the refractive index of this material then how to find it there is a procedure to find the refractive index of an unknown material let us try to do this experiment and find the refractive index of this glass lab so here we have a glass lab now through this glass lab i am going to send a laser light ray now i am sending the laser light ray perpendicular to the glass lab observe carefully how the light ray will travel through the glass lab now you can observe the light ray passing through the laser light 
you can observe the image of the laser light on the screen what happens when i remove the glass lab observe carefully when i remove the glass lab there is no change in the position of the image see observe carefully so the image is not changing when the glass lab is present or when it is removed when we send the laser light ray making some angle with the glass lab the position of the image changes observe carefully on the screen now i have took this glass lab and now i am going to draw the outline of this glass lab so here i have drawn the outline of this glass lab and now i am going to name these vertices as a b c and d now what we have to do we have to draw a perpendicular a perpendicular line to this ab surface i will draw one perpendicular line to this ab surface first let me extend this ab surface and now i will draw one perpendicular line to this ab surface now what to do to this perpendicular line i have to draw one parallel line that means one parallel line to ab anywhere on this perpendicular line see now let us name this as pq so pq is parallel to ab now now what i have to do i will take one pin and i will put this pin on pq and now i will put the glass lab in its original position now observe this pin through the glass lab i have took another pin here now what we have to do we have to adjust this pin as it coincides with the another pin that means these two pins has to make a straight line see carefully observe now these two pins are looking like they are in a straight line through the glass lab are these two actually in straight line let us try to observe see these two pins are not in a straight line so there is a gap between these two pins let us try to locate the point of the second pin let us suppose the now the pin has been located this difference that means this distance between the two pins is called as vertical shift let us try to calculate the vertical shift first of all i will remove the two pins and now let us try to calculate the vertical vertical shift and then the refractive index of this glass lab let us measure how much the vertical shift is this distance this is 0.8 cm so the vertical shift of this glass lab is 0.8 cm now let us measure the thickness of the slab it is 2.1 cm 
so the thickness of the glass glass slab is 2.1 centimeters how to find this here is a formula to find the thickness of the glass slab so here is the formula to find the refractive index of the material so refractive index n is equals to thickness of the slab by thickness of the slab minus vertical shift so just before we have calculated that means we have measured the thickness of the slab that is 2.1 centimeters and now we have experimentally calculated the vertical shift of this glass slab how much it is it is 0.8 centimeters by substituting all these values in this formula we get n is equals to 2.1 by 2.1 minus 0.8 by calculating, we get the value, the refractive index N is equals to 1.615. So, this is the refractive index of the given glass slab. So, this, the refractive index of this glass slab is 1.615. So, there are no units for this because it is a constant value. It is the ratio between, refractive index is the ratio between two same quantities. That's why it has no units. Which is also we discussed in the previous class. So like this we have to find out the refractive index of a, an unknown object by finding its vertical shift.